In the last video, we looked at how translation affects our surface normals and how we don't want to do translation with our surface normals. In this video, I want to look at how scaling affects our surface normals and how that's tied in with rotation. I'm going to draw our box again. And then this blue vector here will represent our surface normal. Right now, it's not normalized, but it is perpendicular. I like how it kind of just sticks out at the top of the box. But that's our surface normal. I want to rotate our box this direction and rotations pretty straightforward if you go look at my game engine programming playlist you know we have sines and cosines up here cosine sine negative sine cosine explain why we need that and all that sort of thing but essentially your rotation I'm gonna bump this down to 0.7 and this to 0.7 Ooh, it went way too far there 0.7 and watch the uh, resulting vectors down here as I do this. Let's do negative 0.7 because this has to be negative sine. So negative 0.7 and then we'll take this down to 0.7. And you can see I've rotated my box. If I outline this in green, I'll connect the dots as best I can. Using a mouse and I am not an artist. But you can see... We've rotated our box. Our box did not change size. We're good to go. However, look at our normal vector. We're using this middle vector as the normal vector. It is still pointing out of the top of the box. It is perpendicular to, to the top of this box, which is what we want. And so hitting the normal with the rotation, ah, that's nice. That's good. Now let's actually set that normal to length 1. We'll make it a normalized normal, even though it doesn't really matter for demonstration purposes. We do like to keep our normals normalized but as I normalize it I'll get this down to a length one he'll hide behind that red basis vector right here but you know that he's length one and if I move that little blue normalized normal vector to right here he's perpendicular to the surface in that regard to the green box but to the red box he was he's perpendicular right here before I did the rotation so yes we do want to take the rotational part of our matrix and apply that to the surface normal so that the surface normal maintains its normalness, its perpendicular to the surface which, which, to which it represents. Now, scaling's kind of different. Scaling's a different issue. In fact, let me put all these back to ones and get our box back in its regular location. Don't blink. Okay, we have our box back. All this back is back to the identity matrix. Nice and one. Our surface normal is hiding behind that red basis vector. I'm like keeping him at length one. Like so, I'll slide him back down to length one. So he's a normalized normal. If I pick that vector up and drop it up here, you can see, ah, nice and perpendicular to the surface. Now say I want to scale this box. I want to make it bigger. I want to make it 1.5 times bigger than it is right now. Well, scaling in the X is handled right here, and scaling in the Y is handled right here. Well, wait a minute. Isn't rotation handled up there as well? Yes. Yes, that's right. Here's the rotational information. Translation's hanging out here. I showed you how to turn off translation by ripping this off or setting this to zero like we did in the last video. So since this is our surface normal vector, I'm just going to keep his translation component, or his W component in this case, down to zero. But over here, we do rotation and we do scaling. Okay, this scales on the X, this scales on the Y. In fact, watch. Let me bump this up. We'll go 1.5 times bigger 1.5 times bigger and of course the bottom of my box goes off the bottom of your viewing area but let me just connect the dots like so oh, come on connect the dots like so and you can see you can see most of the box you can see the top portion of the box and I'll do the bottom of the box here even though you can't see the bottom of the box there we go this green box is 1.5 times bigger than the red box. And we did that by changing these red basis vectors. Again, the Game Engine Programming Playlist. What effect did that have on our surface normal? We can't see our surface normal. He's hiding behind the red basis vector. Let me ask you a question. Is our surface normal vector still length 1? Or did he get longer? Did he get 1.5 times longer than he originally was? The answer is... He's 1.5 times longer than he is. And I can tell you why that is, because we have a 1.5 right here. This matrix applied to this vector right here gives us this result. And this vector right here 
is our surface normal, 0 on the x, 1 on the y. Apply this matrix, this vector, and oh, we got a 1.5. He's actually the same length as that red basis vector hanging out in the background. And I can actually prove that uh, as far as the diagram is concerned. I'll grab the slider and just make him a teensy bit longer. And as I do watch, he'll poke out from behind the red basis vector. Pop! Pop! See? There you go. He is the same length as the red basis vector. In fact, if he was length 1, we'd be able to see his fins. Uh, let's see, length 1, roughly about there. We'd be able to see his blue fins right there. So the scaling scaled our surface normal. All right, in fact, let me draw the surface normal on top of the green box. With the red box, the surface normal is perpendicular, and it was length 1. With the green box, it's perpendicular, but it's no longer length 1. Well, how can we make a vector length 1? That's real simple. We just normalize it. We divide that vector by its magnitude, and that will take that vector down back down to length 1. So when you have uniform scaling, key term there, uniform scaling, I'll tell you why uniform is important in a minute. If you have uniform scaling, then you have to renormalize your vector. Otherwise, the vector is too long. If you do the dot product, you got the magnitude of this vector hiding in there. And so you won't just get the cosine, which is what we want. You'll actually get the magnitude of this normal vector times the cosine, which is not what we want. So with the uniform scaling, we have to renormalize this vector. Let's do the rotational trick. Before I changed these all to 0.7 and rotated that red box around, uh, now I changed these two to 1.5, and that gave us a larger green box. But what if I combine both of those? I want to scale it, and I want to rotate it. I just happen to know that the 0 0.7, 0 0.7, I had 0 0.7 here, 0 0.7 here, negative 0 0.7, 0 0.7. It's just a nice handy number I memorized because I know cosine, sine, negative sine, cosine, and 0 0.7 works all the way around. If I take that matrix and, and multiply it to the 1.5s, then my end result will be point or 1.05s all around. So 1.05... Yeah, 1.05, oh, too far, 1.05, negative 1.05, negative 1.05, and 1.05. I'm running out of colors to draw with. I'd use yellow, but yellow's hard to see. Let's use black. Let me trace our box again, like so. And this one, I can't, oh, he's down there off the recording area. I'm totally going to guess this. Yeah, something like this. There you go. <laughs> and then this is going to come roughly down. Oh, that was terrible. But if I did that correctly, it'd be more like this. Uh, but you can see we've rotated our box and we scaled our box. Don't blink. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. There we go. Best I can. I got rid of that. Anyway, so I scaled my box and I rotated my box. So what what should that do? Here's our original surface normal. What will that do to our original surface normal? Well, we saw the rotation uh, rotates the surface normal just fine, but we also scaled it as well. So our surface normal is actually longer. We have the exact same problem. So with the rotation by itself, we don't need to worry about renormalizing the surface normal vector. But with scaling involved, if it's a uniform scaling, very important it's uniform. In the next video, I'll show you why that keyword uniform is so important. But generally, that's what we're doing. We're just doing uniform scales. If we're scaling at all, generally in our games, we just translate and rotate. But anyway, if we're doing a uniform scaling, then we must renormalize that vector down to length 1, which is somewhere in there. Anyway, you can see our surface normal vector again hiding behind the basis vector. We extended the basis vector. That also extended the surface normal, and I can prove that just by sliding him down. You can see him down there. But if I set him to 1, you can see he's longer. He's 1.05 long in the y, 1.05 long in the x. So what's the total length? That'd be the square root of 1.05 squared plus itself. That's the Pythagorean theorem, which is roughly, calculated offline, roughly 1.48 long. So he's definitely not normalized, definitely not length of 1. But there you go. When you have uniform scaling, you must renormalize your normal vector before using it in calculations. In the next video, I'm going to show you why that keyword uniform scaling is so important.